wonder who this is. Hey, there are we go. in. Hey, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, how are I you? came to pick you up for lunch. Well, before we go to lunch, uh, do you mind if I run some compression testing? Oh, cool. What you got? Well, we're uh, right now we're looking at running a compression test with a strain gauge on a composite material. Okay. That uh, looks like some of those small, the 062 UBs? Is yeah, correct. Right? Yeah, this is an 062 UB that was basically designed to run. Um, if you look at the actual strain gauge, the grid is actually in the opposite direction that you would normally see them. Yeah, I, re I remember those. We made a couple of different sizes of them, right? Yeah, the reason why this is this way is so that the wires, and you'll see when we put in the fixture, actually don't get in the way. Okay. Um, and if you look here, we got a 125 UB, which is much bigger size. Okay. Cool. Can I watch? Can I stick around and watch? Uh, you're more than welcome. It's going to be pretty quick, but um, I okay. think you'll appreciate uh, the actual precision of these little devices. Okay. Basically, we already have loaded the, uh, you know, width and thickness of the specimen. We're using a D695 ESTM standard, and we have it what we call a modified D695, which has, if you look at the fixturing, it has a groove in it that allows you to put the strain gauge without having... Okay. issues with the soldering and things like that so there's an actual gap in the get in the actual fixture to put the gauges there and i'm assuming the rest of this is just to support it to keep it from buckling, buckling right? yeah this is basically an anti-buckling device if you think about it okay allows it to move vertically but keeps it from bending out of plane basically correct boeing a lot of people call that a boeing modified compression test as well because boeing came up with this actual support fixture to do it okay in this case, I'm just going to hand tie it. Uh, we're using a, a 2,000 pound frame for this test, which is not enough to take it to failure. We're not really interested in failure today. We're looking at modulus only. So, okay. Um, basically, what we're going to do is just, like I said, we hand tied. We don't want to over tie this because basically at that point, you might be more um, testing your ability to actually compress the specimen in the fixture versus actually running the uh, specific test. Okay, so it gets loaded. This bottom portion of this L-shaped piece of metal loads the bottom and the top gets loaded by the... The platen. The platen, okay, cool. So basically what we're trying to do is, is if you put the specimen between your hands, you're really trying to collapse it. So in this case, uh, using a strain gauge, this test, a lot of people use the displacement of the crosshead to figure out the actual modulus. If you think about it, it's it's actually not as precise as strain gauge. We're looking at really the area that's actually concerned here. When you're looking at the entire displacement, there could be a little bit of a loose, you know, situation with the fixturing, and it could be actually the specimen not be sitting properly, and you're calculating that part of your displacement. Mm -hmm. The strain gauge is way more precise for this application, and actually gives you more accurate data. Okay, cool. So what we need to make sure in this case is that we really center in the center of the actual loading axis. You don't want to be actually on the side of it, although those plans will not bend enough for this amount of test. You still want to be as axial as possible to gotcha. So you test. got it in the center is about right. as best as you can align it. Yep. Yeah, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get as close as possible and then I'm gonna basically use a really micro displacement and check on the screen over there to see when I actually start applying load and then I will stop. Okay. So you can see right now, I'm actually touching the specimen. If I go down a little bit more on the load, yep. there we see go, it. we got see 27 it. pounds. See it. So what we need to do when we get to the point where if I move it and I'm going down, I go back one notch okay. and then I just zero the actual um, extension portion. Okay. And now what I need to do is if you look at the actual strain, I'm already at 700 micro strain. The reason for that is when I plug the actual um, connector for the strain gauge, the strain gauge had an offset. Mm -hmm. So I got to make sure that that offset is taken care of. And also the fact that when I put in the fixture, there's a chance the specimen was not totally straight. Yeah. And I'm actually bending. bending a little bit the specimen. Yeah, I, I want to take all that out because the actual support on the uh, jig will allow you to make a really parallel test. Gotcha. gotcha. So now basically what the only thing I have to do on the amplifier, and we're using a 2300 amplifier for micro measurement. Yeah, you can see it's got a negative, the negative LED is lit. So, so that tells you it's got a little offset correct. as well as the screen. So basically the only thing we want to do right now is zero it out. 
and we're gonna get you know in this neighborhood where we get some still minute offset and what we're gonna do is just trim that out to get as close as possible to the zero excellent and then basically now we're ready to we're ready to do this we're gonna zero the extension zero the load and then we're gonna start the testing how much load how much uh, load are you planning to put on I'm gonna try to go to a thousand pound at this point we're still gonna be within well within the elastic portion of this test and the front could go to 2,000 pounds. We don't need to go that high just for this. Yeah, um, so we're at 300 pounds, 350 pounds. We're at about 1,600 micro strain. It's amazing how how stiff that little small structure is. Yeah, it's, it's these composite materials, you know, have the ability to be so much lighter weight and still have, you know, decent right. tans, you know, decent strength and rigidity as well, so. Now we just reach a thousand pound. We're going to stop the test so that you will see. And if you keep looking on the actual uh, strain value with this material, it's a pretty stable material. We've got a thousand pound on it, but slowly but surely, you're going to start seeing some relaxation in the specimen. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot because you're in compression and you're actually engaging the fiber that way. Um, but at some point, you will see some relaxation. So if I look at the actual data calculation, if I look here, um, the specimen length here, in this case, it was 3.25. This is just for our own calculation. We don't use that for the modulus. Um, and the modulus being in, in a PSI, it's too big as far as the displacement, but the modulus of this material is roughly one and a half million. One and a half million. Yeah. So um, this is basically how to run a strain gauge compressive test. Uh, normally um, for this material we run five to ten specimens just to be as accurate as possible. This is a material that's actually a 090 fabric so we would test both directions uh, because they might be actually be knit differently and if you look at the uh, the strain gauge right now you would realize that could, we could keep on reusing this as long as we don't bring it past a certain point. Okay. both for the specimen and the strain gauge so this coupon actually could be retested and go to failure if we needed to okay great and tell me again what ASTM standard you mentioned there was a this is a compressive test and it's called D695 this is basically normally made for plastics a lot of people use the D695 originally for composite material there's another standard there's, there's several standards actually D6641 is one D3410 um, but for this case, this is a test that we've been running for many years for this customer, and that's what they were requesting. Okay, great. Well, you ready to go to lunch then? You done? Now let's, let's go have some food. All right, sounds Thanks good. Thanks for coming by. Thank yep. you.